Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the bubble sort algorithm. Now I'm using Canva to kind of demonstrate how this goes from the theoretical side of things. I don't have any fancy animation software or whatever. I don't really know how to use them. But yeah, maybe later on when we deal with other complex algorithms, we can, uh, I will look up how to use those animations so I can make this whole um, tutorial look a bit better. But anyway, for now, this is what we have. So the bubble sort algorithm works in such a way that um, you basically compare an element to the next and you check if they're if it's bigger than the element in front of it. And if it's bigger, you just swap them. That's basically how it works. So the, so you would check if three is bigger than, than four and that would be false. And then you would check if four is greater than seven. That is also false. You check if seven is greater than one then all you do is just swap these two because seven is greater than one and then you would do the same thing with um six and seven and you would do the same thing uh with these two sorry about that right and you would also swap seven and five right and this is the first pass um this is the first pass in this algorithm right you uh seven will be sorted and then now you have to loop through from here you will loop from here to here and you would check you do the same thing check if three is greater than four four greater than um, one which is true you would swap these two elements and you would skip that and then you would swap these two elements it's basically how it goes and you would also swap these two elements here hope i didn't make any error there but anyway you guys see how it goes now these two elements will be sorted and actually this one will also be sorted and then you would check if three and one are greater or three is greater than one which is true then you would end up having something like this uh, actually that would be skipped and you would swap two and four right that is another pass and now we'll be left with the final pass i hope yeah i think it's the final pass where you would check one and three, and then you would check three and two is three greater than two. That is true. And you would swap these two values. And that would be the last pass, right? Basically, that's that's how it goes. So here's how the algorithm goes as far as the coding is concerned. Um, here, okay, I'm gonna run this. So here's how the algorithm goes as far as the coding is concerned, right? So what I have here is a declaration of an array and I'm just printing out the array using arrays.toString and so that we can get this nice little output here instead of looping through the array and printing all the elements one by one, right? So the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a, a method here to swap because we're gonna use that, we're gonna swap elements, remember, we're going to swap the, the first element to the next element and we're going to check and then swap if it is bigger right so we'll say public static void and we'll say swap we take in three parameters we have three parameters that takes in three arguments and uh we'll call this a and this one will be i and this one will be j and here the first thing we're going to, need to do is we're going to check if i is equal to j and we'll just return if that is true or else what we're going to do is we're going to declare a temporary variable here and then we're going to store the first or the elemented index i right so that current variable that gets passed in there we're going to store it here and you'll see why in a sec and we'll change that value to to um to the value of j right the second one and we'll change that value j to temp and so you can see why temp is useful because 
we can't we we couldn't have said a um this value here at index i because that value has been changed to j so it would be the same thing right so that good thing we stored that temporarily in this variable so now we can start writing some code so if you think about it if you remember in the in the video in the last video we've we've talked about how um we need to look we need to swap the, the the first element with the element next to it and so on and so forth so the first thing that would come to your mind is to write a for loop right and uh, we loop to the end of the array okay i'm going to leave it like that for now and we got what you what you're thinking is checking if the um the element right at index i is greater than the one next to it which is i plus one right and you wouldn't be wrong necessarily but it's incomplete right and you would swap n with i plus one and i you wouldn't be wrong but it's incomplete right so if you run this what you're going to see is we're actually going to get an error for this yeah it's out of bounds because if you count the number of elements here it's one two three four five six seven so there's seven elements in this array but i've specified here if i say if i say n at index i is greater than n at index i plus one when this i is equal to six when you say six plus one there is no index seven here so it's out of bounds right so we can we can look through n minus one instead of n length right n length minus one so we're going to run again and what you're going to see here is that once we got to four four and seven actually once we got when we when we got to seven and one it swapped values and uh it swapped up until seven was at its sorted position and it also swapped yeah a couple of values so this is what happened let me write it down in the comments what happened was three stayed where it was four stayed where it, where it was seven and one swapped values so one was here seven was here right and then seven swapped values with six as well so six was here and then seven went where six where six was and then seven swapped values with two two was here seven seven swap values with that and then five and then it did the same with five and then five was there and then seven seven went to the last element of the array right we push the bigger values to the end that's basically what we're doing with bubble sort and as you can see these elements are the same as the ones that are printed out here so that's what happens in the first pass of the array right so if you think about it this way you're actually thinking about it the correct way right because now you're breaking the problem down into smaller chunks right now this is the first pass let's say pass one right now we need to do the second pass pass two where we'll do the same thing over again and we're gonna push six to the last element to the second last element right if you copy this and paste it here just as it is you are actually going to get a different value as the output right it but it's going to do the same thing right as you can see six is now sorted now there are a few more elements left we'll do another pass we'll, we'll call this pass three and we'll loop again and uh you'll see that five will be sorted now five is sorted and a couple of other uh values have changed as well during that whole swapping incident we'll say pass four because it's not sorted yet and uh now you're going to see that all the elements have been sorted right so this is actually nice You've actually sorted your array using all these using all these for loops, but now th now there's something wrong with this, 
right? We don't want to write all these loops. So if you think about it, um, we can create an outer loop, right? That loops through several times and then performs this operation over and over again, right? I'm sure you're, you're already thinking something like that. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. If you're not, it's okay, right? But that's what we're supposed to do. So we're going to create another loop. And okay, let's say I will we'll change the values later on. While i is less than n dot length, we'll say i plus plus. And then here we can just change these i's to j. Or here, here's what I'm thinking. I can paste this here and I can refactor this because IntelliJ is so cool. I can refactor this to J and now all the values have been refactored and I'll cut this and I'll paste it here, right? IntelliJ is such a cool IDE. And I'm gonna run this and I want you to see the output. Now everything is sorted just like that. So basically if you don't get what's going on here is we're just looping through multiple times and performing the heart of this algorithm many, many times, just like we did the last time, but now we're adding a loop to automate that process for us, right? But now there's a, a slight problem here is when the, array, when the array is already sorted, it still continues to loop through the end of this array, right? It loops through um, seven times, even if, the, even if we're, we're performing like four passes in this array, it's looping through seven times. Now we can control that by adding extra coding here. We can say Boolean, we add a flag, we set this to false. And here we can just say flag is equal to true, right? So every time we make it a swap, it's going to set the flag to true, right? And when there's no swapping involved, that means that there wasn't, um, basically the array is sorted, right? Because it's looped through the whole array and there was no swapping involved. So the array is sorted. So we can say if, or we can, we, yeah, we can say flag, if flag is equal to false, right? But that can be simplified to not flag, right? And we can break out of this array. Just like that. Now, if we loop, I mean, we, if we run that code, it's going to, yeah. Now we can check if what we're talking about is actually happening by adding a counter here. We'll set that to zero. And we can say counter is equal to, oh, we can just increment counter. And we can print counter out. And you see what I'm talking about. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that, that is that is horrible. <laughs> that is horrible. Anyway, it's supposed to be here in this loop, right? It's it only looped through five times because we only have five passes here. But what happens if we don't have all this code? Okay, let's just remove one statement. You see, it's looping through the whole thing, right? So we can, yeah, now we've optimized this algorithm, right? Now the running, uh, the runtime, uh, the time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n squared time complexity. Like this. That's big O of n time uh, squared time comp complexity. That's like quadratic time complexity. So basically here's what it means to have a time complexity of big O of n squared, right? If you do know what quadratic means, then it shouldn't be that hard for you to understand. So if we have uh, one element in this array, so which means that n is one, right? n is the variable here specifying the number of elements in the array. So it's only gonna do one operation because uh, one squared is still equal to one. 
right? That's still equal one. But if it's two squared, it's gonna do, if n is two, so if there's two elements in this array, it's gonna do four operations. So that's gonna be the answer. And if it's three squared, that's gonna do nine operations, right? So you can see that it, um, that's how it goes, right? If there's 10 operations, I mean, 10 elements is going to do 100 operations because that's going to be 10 squared, right? So that's what quadratic time complexity means. So this is basically slow, right? This means that um, it's slow. The more elements you add, the more operations you do, which makes your algorithm run really, really slow, right? When uh, the more data that you add, when your data scales, right? So you want to avoid... Um, algorithms that run in O of n squared, right? It's a good place to start and it's a good place to learn how time complexities work, but you don't want to write an algorithm like this. So we have a couple of algorithms that run in a better time complexity and we'll talk about them later, but the next algorithm, the next two algorithms that we're going to cover are insertion sort and selection sort. We're going to start with the selection sort and then insertion sort.